Hi, my name is Mike Danceglio, and I'm going to show you some cool tools that you can actually use to find lost servers. Lost servers are actually a more common problem than most people want to admit. There are servers that have been hidden behind drywall renovations, there are servers that have been powered on for months, years, uh, some cases even decades, and no one bothers to maintain them and then at some point you're going to need to find it whether it's for an audit or whether it's because it catches on fire whatever the reason you're going to need to find it there are some great more specialized tools that you can actually use for this but I'm going to show you a couple of basic tools that you almost certainly have at your disposal right this second to find out at least some information to get you on your way now for this example I have a pretty small office so I'm not really going to show you a lost server in my office because there are no lost servers in my office. So I've chosen a server that's way out on the other side of the world from me and we're going to go ahead and get some information about that. I'm going to show you some information about that server. So first thing I'm going to do just like almost always when I'm looking for a system is ping it. And in this case I'm looking for tpnet.pl which is actually an internet service provider in Poland and first thing you should notice is that I'm able to resolve the IP address or the host name to an IP address which means DNS is working and there's a lovely DNS entry in there however looks like tpnet.pl is not responding to pings whether it's not responding to pings at the host level or some routing in between the pings are getting lost and nothing's coming back but that's not going to stop me. No way. Still want to find out where this is and what information I have. Now if you remember from a previous video I showed you Traceroute and I showed you a little bit about looking at performance along a route of Traceroute. Traceroute in this case actually gives us completely different information because we're going to interpret it differently. So let's Traceroute and I'll type in tpnet.pl and what you'll see is the trace route, the shortened TTL pings going out and looking at the routing, building information about the path between my machine and tpnet.pl, wherever it is. And you'll see as we go down the list that it's leaving Seattle, it's going to Los Angeles, it's heading down to Palo Alto, it's heading out to New York, These this traffic is then skipping over to London, to Frankfurt, to the open gateway in the EU, then you can see that it actually hits a tpnet.pl server on hop 15, 195.205.0.110. Then after that, we're having trouble because we're not able to resolve the IP address into the host name. This usually indicates that there's no DNS entries or that it's simply not resolving, it's simply not reporting back. That's fine. I can stop this here, hit control C. What it means is that at this point in the trace route, the hosts are no longer responding to ping, so we can't get more trace route information. That's fine. This has actually given me plenty of information for finding a lost server. I now know for this lost server that it's on the far side of the gw.opentransit.net gateway, and I also know that the server that I'm looking for is on the far side of lodz-ar2. Dot tp net dot pl. I know its IP address and I know what side of the router it's on from that address. So I have enough information to at least get me started looking at the location for this server, figuring out where it might be in relation to these other servers. This is actually really useful. It's not so much useful when the server's on the other side of the planet, in this case in Poland, and I don't have a network map for the Polish ISP tpnet.pl. However, in a data center, this would usually yield enough information for me to figure out exactly where the packets were stopping, and then from there move on and actually identify the location and move out from there to search and find it, hopefully. There are, however, more specialized solutions for network mapping, network tracing, and actually identifying the location of systems. If systems are more hard to find for you than this, I would recommend you use specialized tools and certainly keep a network map up to date. There's no excuse for a network admin to not have a good network map available.